are saying do away with surcharges, do away with dividend distribution tax. Whether you can do away with, no, DDT, you, you, know, you will not be able to do away with it. Ha. Either shift you shift burden. it to the shift shareholders the or, as Ketan pointed out, give a credit. Yeah. Right? But if you shift the burden to the shareholders, this 26,000 crore figure that you spoke of as collections on account of DDT, could, could come down substantially because then you would have a variety of shareholders who will seek yeah, so to seek, to, you know, sort of analyze whether that will serve the purpose. But even if and you it will also become more litigious yeah, because right. right now it's a fairly, you know, but sort of. The, uh, one simple thing, uh, again to the point which Ketan made earlier, is you don't do anything at all. Simply provide that any tax paid by way of dividend, although paid by the Indian company, will be deemed to have been paid for and on behalf of the company. Or, or the investor, shareholder. shareholder. And the non resident shareholder is able to take a credit for that overseas. That itself is a major issue. You know, I, 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 I must share this with you. I was uh, at uh, a vibrant Gujarat summit and sort of talking to a number of CEOs. And the issue which came up was that your tax rate today, which you are talking as 33%, once you take dividend distribution tax and everything else associated with it, goes to over 44%. And is that a fair rate? And that is a, and compounded with the fact that you may not have the ability to take the credit for dividend distribution tax in your home country because there's a taxable income there. How will you deal with it? So look at the proposal which has just been introduced in USA about a fortnight back. Hmm. Okay, where the government is saying all monies which are overseas now you get back to the country will pay you you pay tax only at the rate of 14 percent. Okay, instead of paying a normal tax, one time concession. And we will reduce the corporate tax from 20, 35 to 28 percent. Because now we will tax you on all income, including your global income, whether repatriated into USA or, or not. not. Yeah. Just, just look at this proposition. There will be several US companies which at this point of time will be looking to extract profits out of India. This is a reality. This is what we are going to see in the next one year. Okay. How are we facilitating the reinvestment of that money if we are not allowing them to take credit of that money overseas? Okay. You know, I could add to this list a variety of demands that have been pending for some years. For instance, the MAT issue continues to be sticky. Whether it's MAT on FPI, which is a controversy that's sort of re-emerged, or MAT on SEZs, which is a long pending sort of demand in that sense. Uh, that, you know, STT is something that the market keeps talking about. Is it going to be a budget that tinkers with all of this and maybe cleans up all of this? And I'm not underestimating the value of this. I think that's great and gives you the certainty that you're looking for and the exemptions that they've promised. Milta, you spoke oh, about big ideas because Matt. I'm still to hear a big idea. But but a mat on FPI first of all was according to me was never intended to be levied in the first place. So, so I, I, I think it just needs a clarification. I just I think it just needs a clarification. No, fair enough. In so far big as idea, we, Mr. Tarak. No, it is a series of ideas, whether big or small, which put together will make everybody smile. And it in not that one series, your your first input in that series was enhance the exemptions, deductions available yes. to individuals. Up to a particular limit, the not for the rich. The second input was maybe do away with surcharges. Is that what yes. you were saying? Yes. But and rationalize exemptions as well. Okay. So you can't do it without... The third doing. one was rationalize dividend distribution tax. Yes. That's the third yes. pearl Absolutely. in the necklace, so to speak. Absolutely. The fourth, I assume, would be MAT on FBI no, and MAT on SEVs. Man. And you know, it's so, such an important issue. We had this whole issue of MAT on uh, special economic zones, which again is, to my mind, a retrospective tax. You ask somebody to make an investment, say that it's tax exempt, and then you levy book profit tax on it at a later date. You are doing the same thing vis-a-vis -vis FII and FPI. You are saying that your income is exempt, you trade on the stock exchange, zero tax, you pay STG, and then you go back and say, you are not required to maintain books of accounts, but by the way, we'll assume that you maintain books of accounts, and you now pay a book profit tax. What are you talking? You are talking about 20% tax on profits, mm. which are exempt otherwise, as it is. So you have substituted what was a 0 or a 10% tax with a 20% book profit tax. Is, is, is it not absolutely preposterous? And while this has not caught on, if, if FII start getting worried about it, can you just imagine the impact of the pullout that will happen? We are just not. Un so when you speak about you, you are asking what is the big bag idea? Actually, what the government needs to do is not to put acts on its own feet. Okay, so I finally have a string of pearls approach from the three of you. There's only one last issue that I want to bring up in this conversation about what the government can do and that is to do with expanding the base. It's not necessarily one big 
bang approach to expanding the base. This needs concentrated effort over years because it's still only a few percent of Indians that are actually paying taxes in the country. I'll come back to the Fiki report that you spoke of. Can you share with us two or three of the top ideas that you all have suggested to the government to do this? GST being one thing that will, you know, sort of anyway, as collateral the whole process, benefit absolutely. do that. Yeah. But, but, but just look at a number of thoughts which were tabled to, to the Revenue Secretary in this regard. A payment system. So today, you can use cash as a payment anywhere. Hmm. Okay, So long as you are not claiming a tax deduction. So you wanted to buy an electronic item, you can just go purchase it in cash. Hmm. How do you target that it will be used, not, cash will not be used, but you will make only payment by either a credit card or by a check, for example. Hmm. And we spoke of two different ways to approach it. A carrot and a stick approach. Stick approach hasn't worked. The people will break up uh, uh, invoices and do whatever else. And the question was that if, for example, payments were made by check, could a rate of tax, for whether it is indirect tax or direct tax, indirect tax qua the buyer and direct tax qua the seller, be a percentage point lower than what it would otherwise if the transaction was by cash? Could that be... By, by, by if cash could be higher, huh, and check, and would, check be would be lower. Yeah. lower. Yeah. Now, that, that itself is a, is a very important thing. We then studied which are the industries which generate and absorb cash. Hmm. Real estate, jewellery, and we have made number of recommendations of what can be done to streamline that. And really that is a mechanism. And, and finally, the only way the government will be able to keep a tab on cash is by having a good IT infrastructure. I think the issue is about uh, A, information, and B, what do you do with that information? And frankly, the third issue is, uh, how do you try and ensure to the extent possible there is no misuse of that information in the form of harassment, which is also a fact of life. Sure. So your top idea for base expansion in this budget? In my, 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 own, my own view is, uh, in this country at this stage, the last thing you want is additional obligations because you have first to bring the trust factor back. Therefore, I would go for increase in information to the extent possible. So the simple thing like bank, you said, okay, today you have data of deposits in savings bank which are required in the AIR. You could say, why not to current accounts? Why not for the cooperative sector? Provide it and you have to do it in consultation with the banks that it is not an additional burden, especially for the cooperative sector. But if you do that, then the next question comes, how do you analyze that data and track? I, I am a great votary of Galaxy today, any country in the world. You can't govern, you can't eliminate uh, malpractices, right? But any kind of policing at the micro level. All you can do is gather data, use it sensibly, and make something out of it. That's the only way. And then have a demonstration effect where you catch people, flog them, show them that, you know, if you are unfortunate enough to be caught there, and that's what the U.S. does. I think this is a much larger question of, you know, tax terrorism, simplicity, and dispute resolution. And I think one of the great fears, you know, Dinesh, I think, mentioned that take away my incentives, you know, I, I don't mind paying even a higher rate, but give me certainty. The average individual taxpayer, and we have relatively in the large country that we have it, so few of them as a percentage, is worried not about paying that tax necessarily, but simply about the terrorism that can happen. So I think having upfront clarity on a variety of issues, having a mechanism to address disputes, and third and very importantly, having a time frame to resolution. But of all this is very good for certainty. What does it do for the tax base expansion? No, because what happens is that, let's say small retailers. The case with small retailers, I don't want to pay tax because the minute I come into the tax rate, somebody will harass me. Once a ecosystem is set up where he reduces, that fear in his mind reduces, over a period of time, that base will expand. I'm going to end by asking all three of you to be betting men, even if you aren't, and bet on the one change that you expect will happen on this budget. It could be DDT, it could be MAT, it could be, you know, Banking transaction tax, okay. whatever it is that you are willing to bet on. All three of these surcharges, <laughs> DDT, MAT, all three you will find. Now, I would agree that uh, uh, MAT on both SEZ and FII is something which will be definitely relooked at and hopefully that issue will get resolved. You are betting on MAT? Absolutely. And DDT? And DDT, both. I think the increase in exemption limit from 2.5 to 3 lakhs okay. as one. That's just 50,000 rupees. Yeah, I know. But, but you know, even that 50,000, I was surprised to hear that it gets so many people out of the tax net and that is a big worry in the case of the government. It's not just the revenue loss. Okay, fine. It's the fact that you are unable to trace them there, okay, so to speak. Enough. And the second, I think, is investment allowance. I think they will come up with an investment allowance, maybe from 15 to 20, and maybe for a much larger window, not two years, but say five years.
Next week, we discuss tax policy support for Make in India.